and five, four, three, two. What's going on, Murder Yoga? This is your boy C Tech with another episode of the Grinding Jiu Jitsu podcast. And today I have a very special guest. At, I've been waiting for someone, well, not even. Emil was the first one to talk metal and J BJJ. And now I get to speak metal and BJJ with Christian Palgarin. Palgarin. There you go. Yes, sir. Not bad. Yes, sir. Not bad. All right. Killed it. <laughs> And if you guys don't know who Christian is, he's actually uh, one of the vocalists and bass player for a current band right now on the scene called Currents, which I am absolutely blasting. And before we get along, uh, I have a very special guest that's been waiting for weeks to say a little something, okay? So <laughs> one second. Uh, where is my microphone? Okay, Amir? Come here. Chris, can you say <laughs> What's something? Up, buddy? There you go. So what did you want to say to Christian? That I know his songs. That he, oh. knows his, he knows your songs. He's a really big fan. And he's learning the whole song of Monsters. Oh, dude, that's so awesome. Thanks, buddy. That, you know... I would love for you to, you know, one day you can come out and sing it with us on stage. Listen, he's been blasting the song for the last three weeks, and he's been asking me every day if this interview is going down. So <laughs> well, why don't you um, sing one of the parts of your songs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now. Ahead. Let's see it. Or get out. I don't care if you don't waste my time. Stand by my side, or you can move on with your life. Yeah, <laughs> you nailed it. that's awesome, <laughs> dude. Uh, so that's my youngest son, Amir, and yeah, I I blast your music all the time. So doing it right, man. It, and it, that that makes my heart happy. You know, like I I grew up going to shows with my dad too. Like he loved to like heavy metal music too and all that. So it, it's cool to see, especially with all the, like a lot of people start to, are starting to bring their kids to our shows. So oh. it's, 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 it's a cool, it's a cool experience to be able to see that like firsthand. I'm glad to do this interview because at the end of the day, not only do I want to speak to you, but he really wanted it. And it was like best of both <laughs> worlds, you know? And I was like, you know what? I'm able to, to, show him something that I don't think a lot of people will ever be able to, you know, just have an opportunity to even experience. So once again, thank you so much. Dude, uh, my pleasure, man. This is sick. Okay. So uh, starting with our Grinding Jiu-Jitsu podcast, I made this podcast originally for the ups and downs in Jiu-Jitsu and competitive Jiu-Jitsu. But today we're going to do a little twist because I know uh, I was on the road all the time as a consultant working mm -hmm. so this is going to be right down our alley so for those who don't know how your jiu-jitsu journey is like how did you start jiu-jitsu and when did you find jiu-jitsu so I, i've done jiu-jitsu for a very long time now uh my dad owned a karate school when uh i was a young kid and back in like the early 2000s um brazilian guy came up to fight in the ufc uh his name was hermes flanca and uh, he like recruited my dad and a bunch of his gym buddies to uh, like be his, their striking coaches and stuff and like, okay, just, you know, bodies to train with. And um, in like being in those camps, they taught my dad some jujitsu, which he would come back and roll around with us. And it was I, I ended up falling in love with that more so than anything in karate, because, you know, it's just it it felt real, you know, like you get that energy with it and, you know, and he, it, you know, you got to like rough around with my dad and it was a great time. Um, and then, but so we did that for a very long time. And then throughout my teenage years, obviously when I started doing music and, you know, skateboarding and girls and all that stuff, like, you know, martial arts kind of went to the side. Uh, and then it was just for a really long time after that, I was just like, something feels missing. And then one of one of my buddies, uh, I saw he he saw that I was like a big fan of the UFC, so he was like, "Oh, like you should come to my jujitsu gym 
it was right down the road from where I lived. I was like, yeah, you know what? That sounds fun. I'll do that. Stepped in, never went back, <laughs> never stopped. That was uh, 2017. So that so the initial was with your dad. Yes. And then there was like a good point from me being like about like, you know, so that was, that was me as long as I could remember up until I was like 13, 14. Ooh. And then from 13 to about uh, like 21, 22, I didn't do anything. They didn't even touch it. Yeah. And then when I hit about 22, uh, I stepped back into a gym. Now, now, do you do now I I do this all the time because I took a three year break and I'm like, damn, if I didn't take that three year blank break, I would have been a black belt right now. Does it cross yeah. your mind just a little bit? Well, some sometimes, you know, it's funny. I always told my dad, uh, he was like, it, like, if you ask him right now, what I what I always said, even from a little kid, I was either going to be a fighter or I was going to be a professional musician. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's so sick. And what yeah. rank do you hold right now? Purple belt. Purple belt. Oh, yeah. so you're part of the Barney club with me. That's right. <laughs> hey, so no, that's super sick. And something I just found out recently, like right now, right before the podcast, tu eres colombiano. You see? Yo, representing for the Latinos. Burr, 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 burr. And not for nothing, the reggaeton, especially like Boricua, Puerto Rican culture, yeah, like yeah, yeah. our reggaeton is, is bumping hard in Colombia. So I already know that you're probably already bumping all that shit once in the blue in those headphones. Oh, all, all the time, man. All the time. You rocking Bad Bunny? Yeah. <laughs> you know it. You know it. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny, too, because like I, I dance a lot on stage. Like I can't help it. It's in the blood. Yeah. You know, yeah, I dance. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I forgot. I think we were in uh, we we're in Atlanta, and uh, this Mexican this Mexican girl came up to me and she like looks at me and she's like, "You're not white." <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, "What?" I mean, she's kind of right, but I mean, she's like, she's like, "White boys don't move their feet like that." And I was like, "Thank you." I think <laughs> I, I'm not. I didn't say it, but you know, there's there's some 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 truth. Not all truths, because there is Justin Timberlake. But I know what she was That's talking true. about. That's I know true. what she was talking about. Yo, yeah. that is so sick. So like you being on the road doing like, are are you dropping into any jujitsu gyms that you're you're able to to are able to even join? Like you know, just drop in. Yeah, whenever I can. Uh, I also bring mats with me. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our our drummer recently started too. So uh, this, <laughs> this next tour that we do, uh, I'm I have like a bunch of those like folding mats that we're gonna just load into the bandwagon. Because usually too, like what I would used to do is like I would have the mats and sometimes they would sit for a few days because like after like a couple of weeks I could like people stopped being conned into doing this. I'd be like, just try it, just try it. Come on, baby, I need my yeah. fix. Just well, yeah, dude, it, <laughs> I, have some, I have some videos. And uh, cause I, what I would do too, is just like, I would just have like a lot, like a line of the dudes, just like Shark Tank, I would be like Shark Tank me. Just, I would just be like, I'm gonna lay here. Just don't let me get up. Can and then it would me? just become, yeah, it'd be like a competition between all the dudes being like, I can hold them down. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Try Let's it. go. Please, yeah. please. Let, put 10 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Yeah, right. Oh, that's so sick. So so you are trying to, you know, like showing the guys little something, something to see if you can pull them into the dark side yeah, and the drum. Uh, yeah, I got our I got our drummer, Matt. He's got the bug. Oh, his, yes. his, his brother is a blue belt too. He's a his brother's a police okay. officer in a blue belt. So uh that kind of gave them like a, a bonding thing, you know. There's always been a thing about brothers in jujitsu and it just works so well. It is. It does. And so yeah. you guys are up north. You guys are in Connecticut, right? Yes. Tri-state yeah. area. Stand the fuck up. See, people people be sleeping on the on the, the east coast, you know what I mean, for metal. I'm sorry. We bring out some good freaking projects. Don't get it fucking <laughs> twisted. Yeah, be, uh, question. So before Currents, uh, you were with Lion Lions? Yes, yes. How long were you with that project for? Uh, that was my, like my first real band, oh. um, like at least professional, like touring band. Uh, I, I, right out of high school, I got recruited by them and it was basically up from like 2012 to about like 2015, we were like super active. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, things happened. They were all, they were all a lot older than me. Like some of them were like 
you know, 10 plus years older than I am. So yeah. by the time like, you know, things were like 20, I'm 20, when I was 25, you know, they're pushing the age where like, Hey, like it's time to start yeah, looking at other avenues here. <laughs> but I was like, I'm still hungry. I, I can't just sit around. And, and that, and I guess I kind of fell into that uh, little conundrum. So I tried to do the music and then yeah. my, I, I had little bands here and there. And then I finally found like the one, when you know you found the one and you're like, yeah. these dudes are super professional, even though they're not older, we were all the same age, but I was on the road for so long mm -hmm. that my kids were growing up and it was to the point where they were like, Papi, like, you're going to leave us again? Yeah, oh, that's gonna and I'm so like, oh, oh. so to tell them, yeah, I'm gonna go to do music. I was like, I didn't have the heart to do it anymore. So, yeah. I, I, so th this is my son. What? <laughs> he, decided, he decided to just join us. I mean, I can, up, only imagine, I can only imagine how hard that's got to be. Like, even just leaving him for a little bit, I'm just like, it tears it was, my heart out, you know? Well, I, I'll give them props because not for nothing, after I left, they got music videos and they, they, they're putting out albums and, and they're they're touring. Like, they're really doing their thing. And I'm super proud. Shout out. If you guys are watching the podcast, shout out to As Beings. I love you guys no matter what. No matter, you know, we didn't leave on really bad terms or anything like that. They're my boys. I still talk to them. They're cool as fuck. And shout out to Lion Lions. I heard y'all doing a, a reunion, a little reunion show. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be cool because um, my brother also plays in the band with me. So it's not we grew up playing music together. And uh, now my brother, he manages uh, Currents like with a bunch oh, of other. Shit. Yeah, he manages a bunch <laughs> of other. Bands. He and I are like a duo. Uh, he and I run the adult class up here in uh, Connecticut. So you're uh, teaching too. Damn. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he and I teach the adult class. And then, uh, yeah, he's behind me on the music, you know, so it's cool to share a stage with him every once in a while. Fuck yeah, it is. And what belt is he? He's a purple belt as well. Purple belt as well. Yo, yeah. that's super sick. So not only do you got music, you also have jujitsu with your brother. Like, oh, yeah. it doesn't get friend. any better. Yeah, no. it doesn't get any better. It does not get any better. T shit we kind of answered my third question was if you try to get the guys to 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 train with you if we already spoke about that um how about has ha have you met anyone who trains bjj from a different band and rolled with them yes actually this happened recently and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life uh it was in europe we were in the czech republic and in this like medieval fortress that uh, I think it was called Brutal Assault Festival. And I just, we were in the catering section and I just happened to see a guy wearing like a jujitsu like hoodie. And I was just, you know, just to start the Was it Gracie of, Baja, that Gracie Baja triangle or just a Gracie triangle? It was just a triangle. It just, yeah, it said, <laughs> and it said Jiu Jitsu. I think it said Gracie Jiu Jitsu on it. And I was just like, hey man, I, I think I was, this is my Jiu Jitsu school uh, logo. <laughs> this was mine. <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, it was, I was like, hey man, I trained too. Like, nice to meet you. Just, you know, easy. Because most guys, I find that most people, especially people that do Jiu Jitsu and music, are pretty like chill and like yeah. want to talk and, you know, they're easy to talk to. So, uh, I just like, started a conversation with him and he's like, yeah, like I bring mats with me. Like you want to train today? And I was like, hell yeah, like let's do it. <laughs> and I didn't recognize him before. <laughs> and then it, it turned out to be, uh, he was in the band biohazard. Shut up. Yeah. Uh, so I trained with him and the guys from Slepatura. Oh shit. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sitting in like on this, we, he had the big like rollout mats. It's on this ancient cobblestone road. I'm looking at like a castle. We're rolling. <laughs> You're rolling I'm with, in front of a castle. I'm with like these two iconic bands. And yeah. I'm like sitting there being like, what the fuck is my life? Like, this is crazy. So the jujitsu guy in me is, and, and everybody in the jujitsu community was going to want to know this answer. Was it gi or no gi? So they train both. Uh, and they switch off every day. That day was a no-gi day. Which yeah, was, that's all that is, fucking matters. No-gi. That gi definitely worked out in my favor, though, because I definitely <laughs> prefer no-gi. 
<laughs> I'm a small guy. I gotta I gotta use uh, my speed. How, how tall are you? I'm five six. Oh, we are. We're the same. We're the same height. Yeah. I, I was I was overweight. I was a butterball before January. Dude. I was a oh January. Yeah, I was a big butterball, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take jujitsu so serious, uh, super serious. And from January to now, dropped fifty seven pounds. Oh, congratulations! Fifty seven. Oh, weight. Yeah. Yeah, fifty seven, and then I competed last weekend. Got the dub. Got the gold. You know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, I'm, yeah. everything what, is coming full circle. What do you compete at? Uh, so right now it's heavyweight. So it's 222 and under. Mm -hmm. So I got from, I think before January, it was like in the 280s, oh, 277. Wow, and then I'm yeah. down to, I did to 220. Damn, that's actually more. I think that's more than 57, right? That's almost, no, no, it's close, close enough. No, no, close no, enough. No, I'm, I'm not doing math right now. I yeah, failed math class. I'm a musician. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only count to four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so like, and now the podcast is, is starting and I'm starting to get a little bit of traction and, nice. and like the, these little opportunities is making this podcasting like super more, it's more fun now, now that I know that there's musicians who can, I can relate to them oh. and then I can relate to the jujitsu. There's a and, lot. Oh my God. Like, it's way like more than you think. Damn, that's sick. And I'm going to have to start writing shit down because it's like, I, I think I'm going to start making just a little turn and not only competitive jiu-jitsu, but jiu-jitsu and metal. I think I have to do it just just because of my well, love. It's, it's even to the point, too, where there's like so many of us that I was like, we should have our own like competition, just like. Battle of the Bands. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> I, that's a good name for it. It was you call it Battle of the Bands jiu-jitsu competition with all the band, guys in different bands. What you dog? You know what? I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna make the flyer, and then any yeah. band, any band who does jujitsu has to be in the band at least a year. <laughs> Battle of the bands. That would be so sick. And you know what? Even if it doesn't really happen, just to see what bands actually put, try to actually, yeah. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it just to see who gets like in off there. the top of my head. I know there's like uh, Trivium, right? Uh, Matt. There's um I forget which one. Some uh somebody in Crown the Empire. Oh forget okay. which one of them does it. Um yeah, like obviously Dave Mustaine also does it. Bro, what's up? Oh, uh, he and, misses you. I, I, dude, it, it, the second <laughs> the second I come home, it's like this. Like he's like, Where have you been? It's so hot. I want the cold. Dude, oh, that's the worst. He's <laughs> he's like he wants to be outside, but he doesn't want to be outside without me. So I gotta say, I hate the cold too. <laughs> That's why I moved to Florida. Stop us! Stop. You moved. I moved here in Florida. I moved to, uh, yeah. So I was born in Bronx, New York. Okay. And then I was, I was, I took my ass to Miami. I couldn't hack it in Miami. Just yeah. wasn't a family town. And then I found myself in Orlando, and. Yo. Oh, no. oh, so you'll be at? Uh, we're playing in Orlando next month. Yeah, playing on the twenty eighth, and I'm I saw. So I manage 57 hospitals across the country. Oh, no shit. So on the 28th is the first day of an activation. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be uh, able to, because I don't get out yeah. until one in the morning. Damn. So I'm, I'm trying to talk to the boss. I'm trying to talk to the boss. Just one, day, like... just one day. Like, can I get, you know what? How about I just leave at like eight and then, you know, because most yeah. likely you guys are going to go on around 839. About, yeah. You know, hopefully. So let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm praying. Yeah, I got your name on the door though. Either way, so if you make that'll be it, super cool. sick. Yeah, I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah, but my son will be pissed if I don't bring him. <laughs> 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 um. So Chris, so I made this podcast for the competitor, but forget about the competitor side. I want to know the highs and the lows that you've experienced in jujitsu, whether it be on the road or or, you know, just training in your home gym. Um, what's your high so far in your jiu-jitsu career? Uh, I would say, I think one of the proudest moments so far is when my brother and I got our purple belts on the same day. Ooh. You know, because uh, he, I, it took me about a year of me being in the gym, like every day to convince him to start coming to he's like i don't know i don't know you know once he got in it was the same thing and never stopped so he it was always that like 
I had that year of like catch up. He's also a lot bigger than I am. Okay. So, <laughs> he's, uh, the, so he had a little bit of an, like it kind of evened itself out there for a bit. And then, um, you know, just, there's just having that one other thing that he and I can do all the time. And he, he just had his son. So like, you know, putting the little gi on him and like bringing him <laughs> on the mats and stuff like that. It, it's such a weird, like I have memories of him, that being him, yeah. you know, being the, the baby on the mat. So I, yeah, like all, like just being able to do that with him is such like an incredible experience. And that's definitely the high. What's the age difference between you and your brother? Four years. Four. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad yeah. at all. That's not nah, bad. Especially at all. not now. He's, he's going to be 26 and I'm going to be 30. So. Oh, you're, you're so young. You have so many years. So I know I don't look it, but I'm turning 37. So I'm almost in the 40 club. I'm almost in the 40 almost club. there. But I'm grinding right now. I'm like, you know what? Before 40, I'm going to try to do everything in my power to do everything I want in jiu-jitsu before my body completely shuts out. You never know. You could go down to Mexico, get some of those uh, <laughs> stem and, cells. <laughs> yeah, keep it going. Steroids. Keep the train going. <laughs> yeah, we could we could talk about that later. Um, so what's your what's your favorite submission to hit on your brother? I'm starting drama, just a little bit, just a little bit of brotherly oh, drama. Man, um, usually if we get each other, it's got to be like a leg game thing. Okay. Okay. It's like who, oh, so whoever... you play legs? So you play the oh, meta? Yeah. You oh, play yeah. meta? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, it's usually that I've, it's been a minute. The thing about like he and I is that it's either we're, we're having fun. We're rolling. Like this is a good time or we're in the middle of an ADCC match. And, you know, like there's not really like an in between. So it's like, kind of like, we'll like initially get that bump fist and we'll be like, what kind of role is this going to be? You know? And like I 90 90 percent because i think now too it's also like a respect thing for each other so we're not yeah, we're not trying yeah. to kill each other um so we're not we don't ever like rip submissions on each other or anything like that but there are times where like we turn it up and like he'll i'll be like oh shit this little this little fucker just got me in like a bad position or something like that um yeah i feel like if i if it's anything it would probably be like some sort of like uh, yeah some sort of leg game uh What's your go-to leg game? Like heel hook or or is it like more like a knee ba? Uh it it really depends. Like sometimes I switch okay. between different things like that. Uh I would definitely say like, you know, inside heel hook is yes, sir. my my go-to. Yes, like, sir. you know, reap that leg, <laughs> reap the knee, and then get a go, go, go freaking that two right. On, you know. You gotta do it right. If you're gonna do it, you gotta hole. do it right. Hand, honey yeah. hole, all that. I'm a 10th planet guy, so that that's okay. that's butter. So yeah. you know, I was under the insub, uh, assumption, you know, that you know you're, you're you're probably on the road all the time, and you're not like you you you, you probably do jujitsu on your off time, and no, you're fucking in it. Like you, oh, you're awesome. you're in it, and it makes me so excited. Like ADCs, what you what you know about? It? You know, like it's like okay, yeah. like you're in it, and and that's so good to hear. Like someone who's actually like, I can actually say that's your second profession because if you're teaching, yeah. you know, and now you're training all across, like you're having an advantage that a lot of people don't really necessarily understand. Like me being a, a nomad myself, you know, I had contracts in New York. Chicago, Cali, Philadelphia. I got to train jujitsu in some of the best schools around the country. And you're able to drop in on some of the best schools in the country. So, like, how does that transpire on your game now? Do you try to get as much knowledge, bring it back to the guys? Or or it's more like, yo, every, it's no holes bar. Like, my game versus the world. <laughs> well, I, I usually try to be as like respectful as I can be when I'm in new gyms and stuff like that, uh, especially to like, um, you know, uh, like you had a meal on before uh, and, you know, he's such a kind person yeah. and like open, he will open his gym up for me, like when it's days that it's closed so that we could do stuff like that. So it's like, I'm not going to go in there and like hurt one of them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, besides too, he would smash me. <laughs> like, so yeah, it, you don't want to get fucking subbed by a guy wearing a unicorn one no. piece. 
No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. That's like worth. That, that's like. Yeah. But then again, he's so good. Is like, like me personally knowing how good he is. It is what it is, bro. Like, oh yeah, there's no ego attached to that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we we, we know we know where we're at. You know what I mean. Like yeah. and, and it's gonna take some time, but you know you try to survive and you see if you can take these little wins. You know that's what I look for. Just the little wins. Hey, you caught me in that Kamora the first roll. The second role, you're not gonna catch me in the Kimura. You're gonna have to yeah. do something else, you know. And yeah. that's that's the way you gotta play it. That's yeah. the way you gotta play it. That's super. Sick. What has been your best dropping spot on the road? Like just dropped in, and you were like, "Oh shit!" Like that's this dude. <laughs> um, I mean, he's definitely one of them. Uh, and then so my gym is affiliated with all of like the Gracie Tampas. Okay. Okay. So, like, whenever I go down there, you know, like, training with, like, Matt Arroyo and stuff like that, or, like, any of those guys, um, those it's really cool because they're just a wealth of knowledge. Like, being able to hang with them is cool. Um, you know, especially, or two, like, uh, I've dropped in, like, 10th Planet HQ in LA, and there's hey. always, there's always guys in there. I, I honestly usually find that finding, like, 10th Planets uh, are usually the move because we all know this there are some culty jujitsu places that could be sketchy and you don't know oh, what yeah. you're going you don't know what oh, you're yeah. going to get into just yeah. like because it just says gracie jujitsu on the on yeah. the sign and there's you know quality of schools could vary so drastically but you know like the 10th planet in austin um the 10th hey. planet in el paso those ones are all like super cool guy like i usually find that they're all really cool i've uh, yeah i've stopped at a few uh the one in denver um yeah like all the vibes are cool sometimes i, I train up with the guys in springfield because uh, my, my brother lived up in massachusetts for a little bit okay so he, he was training up at the 10th planet there so we got to know those guys pretty well <laughs> yeah. so sick that's so sick just oh like it just brings me back so i got to train with compri though so mm -hmm. uh since Chicago, I got to train with the whole Comprilo camp. And when I went to San Diego, I got to go with the 10th Planet Freaks of San Diego. Oh, Boogie that's Man. awesome. And yeah. that was an experience. And it was only for maybe less than a month, but it was just nonstop. Like, they yeah. had mad motherfuckers there. I'm talking oh, about yeah. it. The house is packed every night. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Those guys don't play around. Oh man, it was yeah. it was an experience that I would never forget. That's crazy. So yeah, those are cool dudes too. I did a I went to one a seminar with Boogie and uh, Geo. A which one? Uh, it was in New York. In New York? Yeah, yeah. The one upstate or the one that like 10th Planet in New York City. 10th planet new york city hey that's why that uh that's my second uh gym ever oh yeah the like the small one up yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 10th planet that nyc cool. that oh, that's where yeah. uh yeah i i trained a lot with stingray so stingray me and sting i helped well not helped open it they opened it but i was one of the first five members to oh, sign awesome. up you know i was a 10th planet guy i got my blue belt in um in orange county Oh, okay, and cool. then when I got back, my contract was over, went back home to the Bronx. I was like, oh, they're opening 10th Planet. You already know where I'm going, yeah. you know? And yeah, yeah it's so. Cool. Yeah, dude. I, like, the more I think about it, too, it's like the more, because uh, the my school, like our HQ uh, is in New York. It's up upstate New York. Uh, and they have a ton of people come and drop by through there. And it's also so close to like Glover Tech Shares School that a lot of people oh. go there. Um, a lot of people from, um, uh what's his name uh matt school matt sarah school in long island long island yeah, yeah yeah they yeah, come yeah, up yeah. and cross train a lot um my my cousin's husband also trains he's a purple belt as well and like as <laughs> we get along super well uh and he trains at gary tonin's school in new jersey so, jersey like, yes yeah. sir that's so, i mean yeah i've just been all over the place like you know it, that, that's the thing too it's just like because jujitsu is such like a small sport, like the celebrities of the game are so close to like, like you could just go into the gym and train with them. Worst case scenario, 40 bucks, you drop in and you might have a chance to get your ass whipped by them. Yeah. And then you got a good story. <laughs> then you got a good story. You know, like I can say I got carnied by Boogie and not for nothing. He caught me so many times that it's my favorite move. 
Yeah. I do it at everybody. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I love it. I love it. That's yeah. so sick. It's so sick. It's so Gave sick. Gave you those, uh, those silent car ride home treatment. No, <laughs> no. Cause it's all love. I know what he was going to do. Like, yeah. I, oh man, I have so many stories. Uh, uh, but well, that may, may be an, an, a different episode. Cause I don't want to take too much of your time. What are your lows of jujitsu? Um, it's hard to say lows. Like sometimes when I'm, because a lot of the times too, there it is hard to stop at some schools. Like if I don't know anybody in the area, because it would be like you know either classes are really early in the morning before we get to the city, or they're at a weird time like eight o'clock and like that's right around yeah. when we're gonna play. So it's yeah. like sometimes I'll go like almost two weeks without being able to roll and I started to get like you know like the jitters dog yeah like they more violent understand. thoughts yeah, <laughs> yeah the people people don't understand like it is a drug it's one oh, yeah, of the dude, most I'm addicting like dog, drugs I feel like a dog that just like isn't getting like walked like I need to get that out <laughs> uh but then and then the other thing are like injuries like some of the like the worst injury I ever had was uh <laughs> it, it wasn't technically the worst but personally the worst one is uh I popped one of my ribs Oh, and I, it, it, I was out for almost like <laughs> two months. Well, I was, I was dumb. I, um, I was training with an MMA guy and, uh, you know, they're no like notoriously rough cause they fight. <laughs> and, uh, he had me in a guillotine, an arm in guillotine, but in his closed guard. Right. And I was like, my arm's in here. I'm not getting choked for shit. Fuck you. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, not, tapping. This. I'm not tapping. <laughs> But he was squeezing so tight that my chest just went. Boom. Oh, with his legs, like he yeah, was squeezing the he, knees he together. Had a, he, yeah, his guard was up high. He's squeezing like this, and then just oh. like, it, but like I didn't stop. And then I was like, still trying to like fight out of it. And then it happened a second time. And then I was just like, I, I was like, yo, you gotta let go. Like I was like, tap. Like I'm done, dude. I was on the mat. I couldn't get. I couldn't get up. Like. My brother had to like pick me up off the mat. Uh, How was the breathing? Dude, couldn't breathe. Oh like, man, all. Like, that's the it was worst. Like, yeah, because it was like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> because uh, the more air you bring still, in, it hurts. Oh. Yeah, it still pops out. Like you could feel it to this day. And uh, my de my brother decided because uh, he had to drive us home. I couldn't drive. I was in the passenger seat. Like, and uh, he also decided that he was a goddamn comedian, and which kept trying to make me laugh. And every time I laugh, I was like, I was crying, not because he was funny, because it hurt so bad. And he was like, yeah, I'm the funniest guy alive right now. And, but like every time I would exhale a little bit, I couldn't inhale. Oh, so yeah. I was, I was just like, slowly, like, you're going to actually kill Pass me. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then I had to have uh, my girlfriend at the time, she had to uh, like prop me in bed. I couldn't lay on my back. I couldn't sit up. I had to have like pillows, like in like a weird spot. And then like in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh shit, I'm not breathing. I'm like, yo, wake up, <laughs> pick me up. <laughs> so was that a hospital trip or you literally roughed it out yeah, oh my rough. god you're what wild gonna, what are they gonna do Tell me to i don't know but <laughs> give me some morphine or something for now let me get my breath back or oh, you are hardcore makes sense why you're fucking playing do you consider your band gent i consider it has some gent tendency do you consider it a little genty some I mean, poor I, there's definitely influence you know we definitely like influenced by bands like mashuga and stuff that aren't gent but created the genres i don't know how exactly that works but uh like bands like that you so know. what would you consider current like what what genre of music would you consider current like straight metalcore or you think that not i think that. We're, we're we're metalcore that like flirts with deathcore okay okay i respect it i just want i i always say gent core i, I yeah. tell everybody they're gent you know they got some gent tendencies with some metalcore yeah. you know what i mean I, I call it that but there's some trickiness with that right hand i think listen a lot of trickiness i fucking love that shit and not for nothing yo shout outs to the new album the new album is fucking fire oh the thank new you, album brother. is fire yo i you already uh some of the choruses already started catching me and i'm like at first i was like um oh, yeah this is a cool one and then like the second time i hear it i'm already knowing the lyrics and i'm singing it i'm like Fuck, I love it. I fucking love yeah. it. Shit. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's re let's re 
hear it with the lyrics this time, you know? Oh, I feel man. like that's like a thing with like any band. Like when you hear a, a band's debut album or like if you hear a band for the first time and you like the band, you, you're not start. You're starting from a clean slate. You know, you don't yeah. have anything yeah. to compare it to or anything. You just enjoy it, you know? And then now this is our third full length record. So people are like, like, it's almost like you gotta, it's like trying to pick your favorite kid, you know, like, which one's yeah. my favorite one, you know, and it doesn't have to just, I like, I, even for myself, I have to tell myself, just enjoy it for what it is. Like, it doesn't have to be better. It doesn't have to be worse. Like, objectively, if you like it, you like it, you know. Were you on the album with uh, Kill the Ache? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, because I know that you're one of the newest members of the band, because uh, mm-hmm. you joined that in 2020. Uh, 2019. 2019. Okay, so yeah. 2019. So basically, all the full lengths. You you've been on all the full lengths then. Uh, yeah, Minus except one. for the yeah, except for one. Minus one. Minus yeah. one. But I mean, so we'd all been friends for a really long time. Like we, I, you know, Currents has gone through like a few different like iterations of the band. Uh, which I was around for all of them. You know, the original like when we were in high school. Uh, the original band members were some of my best friends. So it's always... Shut up! That's yeah. it! <laughs> so it's always, like, the band has always been family. And then, you know, as everybody that's in the band now, like, back in high school, because I don't even really consider that, like, the currents that people know today. It's It was just a high school band. But everybody that ended up being in the band was friends of the band so it was just like it made it, it always made sense. Like the next person to fill the role, we're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like Yeah, you know? fuck yeah. Of course. Of course he's yeah, coming we, in. Yeah, we all <laughs> played in like bands in high school together, like separately and stuff like that. So it's you know, we all we've been family a long time. Do you know how hard it is to find anybody who listens to metal in the Bronx? Yeah, dude. It's the home of hip hop. Like it was yeah. like even even like don't get it wrong, like the hardcore scene in New York was like pretty huge and and not for nothing uh, i think the 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 majority of metalcore deathcore band they do well in new york because we don't see it a lot like we have a lot of hardcore bands but we don't see a lot of local like metalcore bands or whatever they're just mm-hmm. doing either hardcore or they're doing new metal you know oh, you man, got jinx I wonder, I wonder if you uh, you might know my boy uh hector he played in a band called young graves hector his last name right now is uh, he, he, I'm pretty sure he's like Puerto Rican, Dominican as well. So that's gonna oh, be man, fucking I, funny. Yeah, I have a lot. Well, then again, I don't know if he's on my Instagram. Most likely, we'll 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 talk off off air, and we'll definitely yeah, yeah. find out because yeah, like oh, I have so many stories about New York New York metal shows because we had a gang out here. I don't know if it's like that over there in Connecticut, but we had we used to have a pit gang. In, yeah. in New York. And so you're in the pit, you're getting fucked up. Like one yeah. way or another, they were called like BBH or something. So yeah. like, you know, so you always stood clear, you know what I mean? So even though I wanted to go to the pit, I was like, eh, I might cause some trouble. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some shit might pop off. So yeah, once in the blue, be- I'll go in, do my two step, <laughs> two step yeah. my ass out. <laughs> oh yeah. We definitely had a lot of like, especially I, you know, I was in New York as well. And also, up at Boston, and there were a lot of crews up there, which I I, be, I ended up being friends with a lot of them. So I would see some of the shit that they did, and I'd be like, "I'm good. Like, yeah. I'm being, I'll, I'll be on the stage." So, uh, oh man, like I have so many. I don't I don't want to take too much. Um, let me see. I had one that was a really good one that actually pertains to what we were just talking about. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, where the hell did I write it down at? Oh, have you needed to use jujitsu while you were on the road? Uh, if it's if yes. it's if it's gonna get you arrested, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a disclaimer. I allegedly used my jujitsu once. This is a made up story. There you go. Um, there, there's been like a couple times where I've had to use it, like in a more of like a a minor way, I guess to say. De-escalation. Like de-escalate. Uh, 
like you know there's been people on the state like people that get on the stage that aren't supposed to be there it's it uh this has happened a couple times like where i wasn't playing myself and my friends are playing and there's a random person on the stage that isn't supposed to be there and then they're starting to they're like you got to get off the stage and they say no and i'm like as soon as i hear that no i'm i got them off the stage like easy controlling them nothing too major uh Put the they're... fucking bass on your back just <laughs> yeah imagine uh there was just one there was one time where like yeah i i, I went a little bit overboard uh because I'm not gonna say names. I I wasn't out with my own band. I was with a different band, uh, and the venue. Yeah, I'm gonna like. I'm not gonna tell you where it was either or what venue it was, but <laughs> it was. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it was kind of the venue's fault because, like, you know, a lot of times you go to um, you go to a show and there's merch there, and they have a de- a designated area for merchandise. You know, this venue just like didn't have a good spot for it and uh which was outrageous because the band that we were on tour with was huge and there was like two three thousand people at this show you know and the way that they they had her like laid out was they had like it was up against the wall there was the table but there was no room so she had to stand in front of the table oh that's retarded yeah so like in usually at least like even when there's not a lot of room you're able to be behind the table so there's like a little bit of a buffer between you and the people in the crowd you know you got that distance control yeah and uh she just didn't have that ability there and some guy just went up to her grabbed her just stuck his tongue in her ear like yeah yeah <laughs> and so i was i was helping loading gear out and uh i got a message from our in our group chat being like hey so and so just got assaulted put my stuff down right there ran right to her i was just like tell me what happened she told me what happened and she, she's like i was like what do you look like and she <laughs> she goes he had he was wearing a black t-shirt and long hair and i was like so that's like, everybody in everybody the venue <laughs> yes so then like i was like all right so I was like, usually like, I was like, all right, let me go to my criminal mind. I'd be like, usually if somebody does something like that, they're going to stick around. Like they'll be in the area. And I was like kind of seeing guys that fit the description. I was like, is it him? Is it him? Is it him? And he's like, no, 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 no. And then I saw a guy walking without a shirt on and he had a black shirt tied around his waist. Ah. Yeah. And then I was like, I was like, it's got to be him. Like, I know it's him. And then I pointed at, I pointed at him, and I was like, is that him? And she was like, yeah, it's him. And uh, she was like, I was, I was immediately like, when I just grabbed him. Beeline. I just, yeah, I just sunk that rear. I just kicked his. Allegedly knees sunk it in. Yeah, allegedly. I allegedly sunk in my a rear naked on him. Kicked his knees out and just went right to sleep, dude. Yeah, and then had the security just. I, he's lucky though because like i allegedly wanted to take his head and just bang bang into the ground uh but he got away with just going to sleep taking a little nap and uh just scared the bouncers just threw him out but that was the only real time like in a music setting that i've had to do anything like that so i had to hold myself back so i used to work for equal vision records for oh, okay. um uh for warp tour uh, I was part of their New York street team. So whenever any of the bands, so, I mean, at the time it was like, uh, we came as Romans and, um, there was a band called Mo- Mozart season from, uh, Sacramento. Cool peoples. I used to play Xbox with them. They do a show, uh, long story short, we're at Warp Tour and you know how after Warp Tour it's the after party. Mm-hmm. So Mozart was best friends with Dance Gavin Dance. Mm-hmm. I almost had to put my hands on Johnny Craig. Really? Yeah. He was out of... So, you know, when when people are under the influence, mm-hmm. okay, um, they think that they're able to do whatever the fuck they want. Mm-hmm. And just so happens that the other person working with me at Warp Tour was their good friend from Mozart season. 
So he's fucking, you know, just acting a muck with my boy. And I'm like, yo, you're in New York City. Like, don't fuck around with my friends in front of me, first of all. So we get into a fucking shouting match. Fucking John Mess is holding me back. Bro, please, bro. Please. Yeah. I'm like, I'm about to fuck this bastard up. And that was... and. After that, I was like, yo, I'm never going to see that band ever again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry you had that experience. Hey, hey, nothing happened, and that's all that matters. Yeah. So to wrap this up, do you have anything, any sponsors you want to uh, shout out on the podcast? I mean, there's my boys in Ibanez. Uh, Ibanez. <laughs> there's, hey. there's Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu, baby. Uh, Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, uh, I mean, man, there's so many like random cool people that just love to shout us out and give. I can I don't know if I can name it. It's well, like what's if your you favorite repost song? this. Well, yeah. if you repost this, you know, like you post it and then post everybody on it. And what's yeah. one message that you can send to the metal community who are thinking about trying jujitsu? Just do it. You know, uh, the one thing that I could say is the big connecting, uh, like variable between the two is community. And sometimes, you know, you can go a long time, especially in music without your community, because, you know, there might not be any shows going on. Like, you know, there's so many different reasons why, like, you might not have that, but, you know, jujitsu really helped me find a community outside of music that gave me a purpose, gave me meaning, did something like, you know, gave me another family that when I'm not on the road or I'm not, I'm not able to be around my brothers and currents that like, I don't feel like I'm homeless. Well fucking said. I usually wrap up the show with one last question. Shoot have it. you, have you ever called somebody out on the mats and paid the ultimate price with an L called them out. Uh, I mean, yeah, all the time. Uh, my, one of my coaches, uh, Aaron TV, <laughs> both him and his brother, Aaron and Andrew, every time I'm like, today's the day. Never, <laughs> never. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Every time it's hilarious. And I talk mad shit doing it too. <laughs> You, you think you're gonna catch this Americana? Huh? You yeah. think? Dude, well, you know the funny thing when I was still I, when I was still like uh, like a white belt or something, I was I was rolling with a black belt, and I think I I was I got somewhere where I was like I was in like some sort of heel hook or something position, and he goes, "Who told you that works?" And it messed with me so bad, I just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation has been an just a pure treat for me. And I just feel like, man, I think this podcast could go places because I think this experience that we just had right now on this podcast could reach so many people. And I really pray that people actually sit down and hear this conversation because I think this is something that everybody needs to hear, man. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the J Grinding Jiu-Jitsu podcast, brother. Oh, thank you for having me, man. Even if, even to say nobody does hear this, it was a pleasure to talk with you. Dude, that is so sick. And I'm going to try to make it on the 28th. I promise I will try my hardest yeah, to make yeah, it on the 20th. Just but shoot me a message. Worst case scenario, maybe during the day. I mean, uh, yeah, I think oh, well, it's going to be in the mornings. Well, we'll see if maybe we could work out. Maybe we get some training in. Yeah, I would love that, man. And then All right. bring bring your son to the show too. Like, I would, yeah, I would, I would love to have you guys. That would be so sick, and he would he would absolutely go absolutely ape shit. Like he really really <laughs> digs it. Chris, thank you so much. Have a good night, and um, keep grinding jujitsu. Oh, yes, sir. Stay Oops. on the line. And we are.